Are you planning on having a panel discussion as a part of your next virtual event? Maybe it's a webinar or a workshop or a full-blown conference. Well, I want to lay out one of the things that you really need to focus on when it comes to the tech setup for your next virtual event. And when it comes to a panel, you really need to think about the visual. What do I mean by visual? Well, you're going to have to stick around and find out. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. If you're a fan of free things, go over to loganstrategygroup.com. I have a free guide of the top six questions that I ask every single virtual event platform. And if you're someone who can't get enough of free event tips and tricks, head over to whatever podcast app you listen to podcasts in and give us a follow at the Better Events Podcast. It's a brand new podcast that me and my co-host, Mary Davidson, another event planner, have just started and launched. And every week we're going to be bringing you more tangible tips and tricks about event planning, having event experts on to share their individualized knowledge. So you're going to have a panel at your next virtual event. And you really need to think about the visual. Now, for some of you, it's helpful to think about things in-person-wise. So in-person, the visual just might be, what do you want the stage to look like? How do you want it, the panelists, to be arranged? Are they in comfy armchairs, or are they on more higher bar stools? So fortunately or unfortunately, you don't have to think about the seating when it comes to virtual events with your panel, but you do need to think about the visual positioning. So for those of you who might have a background in production or TV, this is gonna be very familiar to you. But if you're someone who's new to the virtual world, you really need to think about the different camera shots, let's call it, the camera shots that you want. And so when you have your panel, let's say we're gonna do four people. So a moderator plus three panelists. You really need to think about how you're going to visually show that on the screen. If you don't think about the how, it's gonna be hard for you to do the execution. And so what I've found is some clients accidentally choose a tech platform or a tech solution somewhere to stream to, and they haven't even thought about what they visually want it to look like. So if you're going to have a panel, make sure you think about what you want to see on the screen at one time. So for example, if you had a panel, like we said, with one moderator and three panelists, you could have just four people on screen. It's a four shot or a four box, depending who you ask. But there's four people on screen, and you could just leave it that way the entire time. You could also have it where it's just one person at a time. So you go from the moderator to the person they're asking the question to the moderator to the person asking the question back and forth. Now the hard part with that, it does give you a little bit of whiplash, can make you feel like you're watching tennis going back and forth. And so my biggest tip is think about the visual that you want for your panel and make sure you include variety. So it's gonna be very boring if you just stick with a four shot of all four panelists or if you just stick with one back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between the panelists and moderators. So you want variety and therefore you really do want a tech solution that's going to allow you to have that variety. So for example, in Zoom, whether you're using Zoom meeting or Zoom webinar, they have a spotlight function. So you can choose to spotlight all four panelists at the beginning. Then maybe you go one by one as they introduce themselves. And then you can go back to all four when you open it up for questions but you wanna have that variety and going between a one shot and a four shot is gonna help you have that kind of dynamic feeling no matter what kind of a panel you're doing, whether it's entertainment or internal or educational, your viewers are gonna thank you because you're providing them with something that's dynamic. And another layer to this in terms of how you wanna decide what visually you want to see with your panel is you wanna see, are, is there gonna be a difference between what you see live and what is recorded? So depending where you're using what streaming platform, like if you're streaming to YouTube, what's probably live is then also going to be a recording. One of the nuances that I'm finding, and I did an entire video on it that I'll link above, about how to record a multi-person panel in Zoom, is that there is a difference between what people might see live and what you're capturing in the recording. And I've had some clients who really want to make sure that the live and recorded experience are exactly the same. I've had others that don't mind, they just wanna have the ease of the Zoom cloud recording, and that's great. Limitation in Zoom is when you do the cloud recording, you can't get multi-spotlighted speakers. So for panelists, where you might've wanted to have that four shot that we talked about earlier, you're not gonna get that in the cloud recording. And so my biggest takeaway from this video is honestly, if you're thinking about a panel, think about the visual. And now in my example, where I just said one moderator and three panelists, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a four shot of all four, you've got one solo shots of each panelist and the moderator, and if you want to go next level, which sometimes requires someone with a little more technical know-how, and we I just executed this on an event for a client last week, was that we wanted to have the moderator and the person they're asking the question to. So we had a two-shot, 
And that was really fun because, again, it's just more dynamic, more variety. It's going to just add some entertainment value to your presentation. But where I see people get in trouble with this is when they want to have an eight-person panel. And so, again, let's put it in in-person terms. Eight people on stage. You'd have a moderator and seven people. That's a pretty, that's a lot of chairs. It would be already a pretty big visual. Now put it all on our screen. And to put all eight people on screen, you're going to make them pretty tiny depending on what you're using for your um, live stream. I worked with a client who wanted to have a nine-person panel, and that was going to be really hard to see on screen. Nine, everyone gets really tiny. And then you were actually going to probably have a lot of people competing for attention because there's just so many people. So one of the things we did was we took advice about making things shorter. So we kind of split the hour that we had for the nine-person panel in half. Uh, we probably actually we split it into thirds, and we gave a third to one half of the panel, third to a second half of the panel, and then the last part was for Q&A and was open to everyone. Now, a common through line is we had the same moderator do both the first panel and the second panel, and then that moderator opened it up for Q&A with everyone. And that was really fun because we were able to have these smaller shots, these four shots, five shots of the moderator plus panels, Then we swapped out the panelists. So then so we get a moderator plus four panelists. And then we opted for the open Q&A at the end. We just went from moderator to panelist and moderator to panelist. And we stuck with the active speaker view just for the question and answer period because we were taking live questions from the audience and couldn't pre-script what it was going to look like. But that was a much more appeal visually appealing setup than just doing a static eight people on screen and nothing changes. So my biggest takeaway for you from this video is hopefully that you understand that variety is your friend and thinking through the visual of what you see on screen can help you drive your content. Time and time again, I've seen clients who've already decided the content, they've already committed to the speakers, and they hadn't even thought about how it was gonna look on screen. So if you're thinking about having a panel at your next virtual event, I really suggest that you first start with the visual or understand what visuals are even possible in the tech solution that you choose. So for example, Zoom, limit of nine people to spotlight. So if you have more than nine, nine panelists plus, or eight panelists plus moderator, you're not going to be able to spotlight everyone at once. So these are things just to think about because you do have to operate in these constraints, similar to maybe in person if you only have so many chairs. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about creating engaging visuals for your next virtual event panel. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning and running your own business. I'll talk to you guys again next week. Bye.